all the greatest announcements from GitHub Universe and the .NET conference, new stuff happening with Dino, and a pick of the week that celebrates, well, us. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Um, my shirt this week is, it's from Veronica Beard, it's Wonder Woman, it's cool. My beanie is from uh, GitHub Universe. Also, fun fact, this is our one year anniversary of the download. We're gonna be talking a little bit more about that later on in the show, but congrats to us because I'm super stoked that we've been here for one year. If you've been watching us, um, whether it's this is your first episode or you've been watching us since last November, thank you very, very much. As I mentioned, my beanie this week is from GitHub Universe. And if you missed GitHub Universe, you can actually still go back and watch the keynotes and the sessions. They're still online at githubuniverse.com. Uh, we're gonna be putting more of the sessions uh, on YouTube in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for more information about that. But I did wanna cover some of the big highlights of some of the big things that we announced last week. And if you were there or if you joined us online, it was a really great time. So one of the first big things I wanna talk about is some of the updates happening with GitHub Codespaces. GitHub Codespaces is basically our platform which brings your developer environment to whatever machine you need to be on without having to worry about, do I have the power to do this? Do I have the dependencies involved? You can use it um, in your browser or in Visual Studio Code. You can also now use it in the JetBrains IDE suite. That is now in beta. That was announced at GitHub Universe. But the really big news is that Codespaces is now available to individuals, which is great. It was previously available to teams. And even better, everyone gets access to Codespaces for 60 hours a month for free. So if you haven't delved into the world of code spaces yet, you definitely should give it a shot. In uh, the links in the description down below, I have some blog posts that cover some of the latest um, announcements as well as uh, some various uh, uh, getting started uh, repositories we have if you wanna take it for a run. Um, also, give us your feedback. We definitely want feedback from the community and from users on what they wanna see improved and what they like. Uh, I think it's a, a great product. It's something I've been using for several years now. It's completely changed changed the way I do development work and I'm super, super excited that everyone now has access and that everybody is getting 60 hours of usage for free, which is great. Some other GitHub Universe news is around GitHub Copilot. If you're not familiar with GitHub Copilot, it is our AI pair programming assistant tool that works in uh, VS Code and in NeoVim and um, in uh, the, the JetBrains editors. It's great, really helps you out when you're trying to code. And this is now available for businesses. So previously it was available for individuals and now businesses can get in on the fun too. Additionally, we announced uh, a, a preview of a project called Hey GitHub, which is basically bringing Copilot but to voice assistants. So it's actually a voice assistant that you will use. Sorry, Siri, but that's, that's the truth. Uh, check out this demo. It's very, very cool. I was at a point with my injury where it was hurting to use my hands for anything. RSI is a repetitive stress injury. If you're gonna have a career in coding, the health of your hands, it's just really important. That's why I started looking for whatever I could do. Hey GitHub, code mode? I activated code mode. Using Hey GitHub for the first time was totally different than anything I'd used before. You're actually starting with what you want to do and telling that to the computer and it's creating code for you. Define a function that categorizes a triangle by the length of its three sides. Define a function that accepts three numbers from the user as input. Rather than having to either type it out or to manually walk a voice coding program through creating every statement, this figured out what you wanted to do and just created the text for you. Put it all together? Yes. You can still edit the code afterward. It's just skipping a lot of the tedious in-between steps. I probably would have never tried voice coding, even though I think it can be more efficient than using a keyboard and mouse, until my RSI forced me to do it. Define a function that randomly selects between rock, paper, and scissors. 
but with the tools and support that I've developed for myself, I'll be able to continue working. I think Hey GitHub and things like it are going to be the future of coding for everybody. This technology is going to become too powerful not to use. In addition to the new uh, product announcements, we also had a bunch of uh, announcements around GitHub projects and GitHub issues and GitHub security. Uh, the Octaverse report, which is our annual report about what's happening kind of in the community and the ecosystem within GitHub was released. And this was the 10th annual Octaverse report. I've got it linked in the show notes in the description down below. There were some really, really interesting insights. One of the big ones was kind of like the rise of uh, languages around DevOps and so eight HCL, which is HashiCorp's language, was actually the fastest growing language of, tw of the last 12 months. Uh, Shell Script is also making a big comeback and has also grown a lot in the uh, language race. There's great stuff in the Octaverse report just about how people use uh, GitHub tooling, uh, open source projects, the number of committers, and insights that we have. If you have feedback on that, let, let us know in the comments down below because I'd love to know if what you're seeing in the report matches what you do in your own life. And and uh, the final thing, there's so much stuff to talk about from GitHub Universe. I have, as I said, videos and recaps linked down below. But the final thing that I want to talk about is that we open sourced two fonts. And fonts and typography are near and dear to my heart. We've talked about that on the show before. And so we now have Mona Sans and Hubot Sans. And these are two typefaces that GitHub uh, uses on our, our sites and in our branding. And it's now open sourced um, as part of the, the OFL license. So you can use it uh, in your own projects as long as you you credit GitHub, and uh, it's available as a web font. Uh, it's also, what's great about this is the, these are variable fonts. What's great about variable fonts is that they can work for different um, uh, sizes and different uh, weights without having to have a bunch of individual fonts installed. So it's actually really great. I'm a big fan of variable fonts. I love that these are released as variable fonts and that they're open source, so you can actually contribute your own feedback if that's what you want. I love it. Really, really good stuff. As I said, I've got links down below for a roundup of all of the GitHub Universe news. There was so much there. I, I hope that you had a good time. If you uh, joined us online or in person, I sure did. All right, moving on to some other conference news. Uh, GitHub Universe was not the only event that took place last week. Uh, the .NET Conf also took place last week, and uh, that coincided with the release of .NET 7, ASP.NET 7, a bunch of other tooling in the .NET ecosystem. This was a, a really great year and a really great release for .NET. .NET is now on a unified kind of yearly cadence, and this is a uh, long-term uh, release, so this is going to be supported for a long Long time. Um, also, one of the big announcements uh, for, for .NET 7 is that uh, there's now like native ARM64 support, which is really, really great because obviously a, a lot more developers now are using ARM64 devices day to day. And so having that natively built into .NET, I think is fantastic. Uh, Visual Studio is actually also available now on ARM64. So if you are a, a Windows developer who uses Visual Studio, um, that is now available uh, on ARM64. Visual Studio for Mac has been available uh, for Apple Silicon for a, a little bit now, but I'm really loving seeing all this ARM support happen. Um, there are also some great performance improvements, some great things with .NET MAUI for kind of the, the unified toolkit, kind of the future of Xamarin. And I've got links in the show notes and the description down below to video recaps from that event, as well as highlights of everything that was announced last week. But it's really, really good stuff. Moving on, I wanted to talk a little bit about JavaScript. So Deno, which is a project we've talked about before, is from the original creator of Node. And it is kind of a, a rethinking about like, well, what, what would Node look like if we were to approach it in like the, the, the 2020s versus the 2010s? And uh, Deno 1.28 was released uh, this past week. And the big highlight feature with this, I think, is that it now has NPM module support, meaning you you can now import NPM modules into your Deno packages. So you don't have to use the Deno package manager. You can actually, in your file, you can import and you can call the NPM package that you would want to use. Uh, I think the way that the team has done this is actually pretty slick. They've given a lot of thought to making sure that it kind of works with the existing ecosystem. And there are also some safeguards you can put into place if um, you're concerned about things like uh, supply chain attacks. Uh, I love this. I think that 
it's really good for us to have diversity in the JavaScript world. And so projects like Bun and Deno, I think, are really exciting. And I'm really glad to see NPM, which has such a robust community and so many millions of packages now available in this world, too. So really good stuff. I've got links to that in the show notes and the description down below. One other thing I want to mention this week, is speaking of kind of cool projects, there is a great project called FS History, which is Flight Simulator History. This is a recreation of some of the original Microsoft Flight Simulator games from like the 1980s, recreated in WebAssembly, so you can actually play it in your web browser. It's a great project. We might have mentioned it on previous episodes of the download. I can't remember, but the reason I wanted to mention it, I love this. The, the project, which is available on GitHub, is now an Easter egg in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, which is awesome, right? So like the latest version of Flight Simulator now has an Easter egg where you can actually play the old versions of Flight Simulator in the new version of Flight Simulator, which that's the sort of like Inception stuff that I love. And so I'm obsessed with that. Um, a great, great work uh, from the, the creator of FS History. And I've got that linked in the show notes and the description down below. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay, so I had a lot of things I could talk about this week. I could have talked about the drama happening at Twitter, which is never ending. I could have talked about the uh, collapse of FTX, which is monumental. I could have talked about how long I was in line trying to get Taylor Swift tickets, which is a whole other thing. But no, my pick of the week is actually the download, and more, more specifically, the team um, that helps me do the download every week. So the download actually debuted on November 19th, 2021, and here we are a year later. We've done, I think, 30 episodes, which is fantastic. We've gone across YouTube channels, it started out on the Microsoft Developer Channel, and then the team was very nice when I changed jobs to come along with me over to GitHub. And you guys, this has been just a great, great experience for me. I've loved all of your feedback. Uh, Araya, our, our epic producer, ran the stats. There have been over 440,000 views on all episodes of the download over the last year, which is fantastic. I think we have like 500 comments. We've got, you know, like uh, over, over, you know, a, a thousand, I think, likes, a bunch of shares. Th this stuff is really incredible. I've been blown away by your feedback. Please continue to give it for uh, all of us. And I, I really want to give a special shout out to the team that makes this show possible and has been behind me for the last year. And that would be, of course, Araya and the Mats, um, who uh, are my uh, shooter and my editor, respectively, and Araya, who keeps everything running. I also want to give a shout out to, to Golnaz and Cameron and Ryan and the whole Channel 9 crew or whatever the studio is called now. Microsoft Developer Studio? I don't know. I want to thank everyone for that. But most of all, I want to thank you, the viewers. This has been a real highlight of, of mine to be able to do this show every single week across two different channels. And I'm really, really thrilled that we've been able to do this for a year. So thank you so much. And um, keep watching. If you liked this episode of The Download, go ahead and give us a like. And uh, while you're there, subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel because, you know, that's where all your nerd needs are. See you next time.